Hey guys, thanks for checking out Power Nation. I'm your host, Katie Osborne. Well, this week we have some great new tech from our tech center, plus I'll be joined by Tim Wellborn and this historic Dodge Daytona. Now, Tim, what makes this car so fast? Well, back in the 60s, if you go back to around 1963 or four when NASCAR was coming in its own, you had a boxy car. They were doing like 160 miles an hour. The Hemi came along in 1964 and that changed. They went up to about 175 miles an hour, but what happened, they realized the cars couldn't go much faster unless some aerodynamics came into play or they built stronger, faster motors, which is very expensive for manufacturers. So Dodge put this engine into their 66 Charger. It wouldn't go, it wouldn't handle right. It would, it would go fast, but as, uh, as time went on, they knew they had to get away from the 66 with the big fastback. So then they went to the 68 Charger, whole new styling. Problem with that car was, you had a tunnel effect on the front grille because it was recessed and you had a tunnel effect in the, um, the rear window and it was called turbulence. And as, as uh, Buddy Baker said one time, going into a turn at 180 miles an hour, he could turn the steering wheel left or right. And the car just did what it, it just kept going straight because you had a, about 1,200 pounds lift on the front of the car. So they came out with the next generation Charger, the 69 Charger 500. They flushed the grille out flushed the back window to a fastback, went faster, was more competitive with Ford, but Ford was still cleaning them up on the racetrack. So Bob McCurry got in Larry Rathgab and said, what are we going to do to win races? Larry Rathgab got with his guys. They come up with this concept and showed it to Bob McCurry. And Bob McCurry said, that's the ugliest car I've ever seen in my life. You, we, we can't sell it, but will it win? <laughs> Larry Rathgab and his crew, the race crew said, we will win. So they designed a car that had basically zero lift on the front end. So the 1,200 pounds went away, the car would handle. The nose of the car is way down low. If you look at the, the pictures of the car, you, you, you're not even eight or nine inches off the floor. And so it was super slick. And then you had the air flowed over, it, went over the fastback, and then it went through the, the rear stabilizers and horizontal bar. The horizontal bar is actually an aircraft wing turned upside down. So what it did, it pushed the rear of the car to the ground and gave you stability. And there's never been a more neutral race car built, especially at that time. They may claim today they have something like it, but gosh, if we could have seen Harry Hyde go on with this car for another two years in NASCAR, who knows how fast it was going. He personally told me at one point that he could, he honestly believed at Talladega he'd be doing 225 miles an hour if they'd have just let him run it one wow. more year. That is crazy, that's like IndyCar stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, in, in a NASCAR track. So so Bill France basically said no more of this stuff because Bill France had heard that Ford was coming with a super slick uh, Torino and they were. They, the first drawings come out, he just says no more of these cars. We can't do this, this uh, this kind of stuff. So he, he outlawed them to a degree. He said, you cannot run the wing car anymore at the super speedways unless you run a 305 small block engine. Well, in 1971, the last Daytona that everyone on the track was a number 22 Mario Rossi car at Daytona with a 305 cubic inch and the aerodynamics of this car was still so slippery that he led a huge portion of the race and was right in the top five up until about six or seven laps from the end and a slight bump from Pete Hamilton put him down into the grass. He lost a little time, but before the lap was over, he was back fixing to win the race. Bill France said no more special bodied cars. This car was gonna go on and win even with small engines. Wow, wow. Well, this car has a lot of history that you guys will learn all about this week, plus this lineup of tech from our shops. On a new extreme, we go into survival mode as Ian begins Project Suburban Survival. Then the engine power guys finish the Caddy LSA and strap it on the dyno. Truck tech is all new as we transform a boring Jeep into a dual purpose fun wagon. And on Detroit Muscle, it's how to make a 50 year old Mustang handle like new. Well guys, that's what's on Power Nation this week along with Tim Wellborn and the K&K Insurance Dodge Daytona. And do me a favor and check out Gannon on Power Nation Daily. It's all new content all week long right here on our website.